this is an ongoing debate that we've had for um, the better part of 18 months. Um, so we were all talking a lot about what to do about poverty pre-COVID. Um, and as we went into the crisis um, and things became a lot worse, um, I think the, the, the sort of discussion intensified. But I don't think we've moved very much, um, you know, in, in definitely not in the past 18 months in terms of the things that are on the table and, um, and the options. So I will talk again um, about things I've already said and I'll say them again. I'll keep saying them until the facts change. Uh, but I mean, I'd like to make a, a, a few points just to start. I mean, I'd like to start um, on, the, on the contribution that Edgar made, because it's one of the things I had um, on my on my list of comments. Um, the whole idea that um, poverty can be alleviated by um, fiscal transfers. Um, and we've spoken a lot about this. We spoke about poverty alleviation and we always come back to this idea of fiscal transfers um, of one form or another. Um, and, and my question is one, um, do we have poverty because we haven't had fiscal transfers? Um, and if that's not the, if that, the, the answer is no, then we need to look at where the source of the problem is. Um, so, you know, I, I agree with um, Edgar that, uh, you know, it's, very, it's a very narrow way of looking at it. And uh, po poverty, the poverty problem in South Africa is definitely not because of fiscal issues. Um, I think you probably have to look more, much, much harder at unemployment and employment and, and labor market participation um, and labor market policy um, and other, other areas like that. But fiscal transfers can be used as a way to alleviate the problem temporarily, um, but it's not a permanent solution um, to, to, to the poverty problems that we have um, in the country. So I, I would say for me, it's very important that we, 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 we deal with it, with the issue at source, so to speak. And, and we're not doing, um, we're not doing that um, with the current discussion. Um, so I suppose that, that, that'll be my, 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 my starting point. Um, and then the next one, um, which is, I'm, I'm going to deal with things that I'm a lot less, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? that, I, that, that I'm, I'm a lot less of an expert on, so to speak. But the other issue for me is um, the whole tax issue. Um, so, you know, we speak about taxes and we speak about taxes and go line by line by line by line. Uh, but on a micro level, um, all, most of the taxes that have been put forward are, are all um, personal income taxes, so to speak. I mean, that's where you're thinking you're going to get the bulk of the, fa the funding for um, for for um, say a big or a, a another type of fiscal transfer. Um, and, you know, again, um, the point that Edgar makes is very important that we are a very highly taxed society. So if you look at South African tax um, burden as a percentage of GDP, um, and if you look at PIT specifically, um, personal, personal income tax, it's actually very, very high. Um, relative to other emerging markets. And actually, it flags as quite high even when you compare it to, uh, you know, um, developed economies. So, you know, the question then becomes, you know, what, 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 are, what are taxpayers getting for the tax they pay? A lot of um, jurisdictions that have got very, very high tax rates also have very high social, um, social wages, and they have very high um, and good quality education, healthcare, et cetera, which is definitely not something that we can claim. So, you know, in South Africa, you've got very high personal income tax, levied mostly on professionals, high earning professionals, but still professionals, um, with um, them still having to procure services um, in the private sector. That means your social, your, your actual tax burden, if you look at it, is actually even higher than is, um, you know, it, it, it looks like when you just look at the numbers um, in an obvious way. And I think these are things that we need to, um, we need to think about before we levy further taxes um, on, on, on South African workers to say, can you really um, push it? And, and I mean, you know, Edgar made the point about tax morality declining, um, you know, we've got immigration, etc. These are all things that we need to think about. So, you know, you don't have an endless amount of tax that you can levy. So, you know, moving on to, you know, another another point, um, you know, uh, that that's, I think we need to talk about, even though I'm, I'm not going to necessarily go into a lot of um, discussion around that. It's around this idea that, um, you know, you can have quantitative easing, 
and that um, you know um, the Saab can buy huge amounts or unlimited amounts of government debt, and this can be some sort of way um, of funding you know um, government expenditure. And um, you know, my answer to this is this is another thing that's come up and come up and come up, and and the answer really there is simple. I'm not going to say I think uh, this is something that I I'm pretty sure actually I'm I'm quite sure would happen if tre- if the sub went out tomorrow um, and started buying um, the government bonds in the size that is necessary to make a difference in in um, in government funding um, you know you would um, lose confidence uh, or you know investor confidence in um, in, in 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 the sub in in the rand etc. And you would actually precipitate um, an exit of um, offshore funders um, in the bond market. Um, and it would be inflationary. It would increase the cost of funding. It would create all sorts of, um, you know, negative, um, you know, implications for, uh, for the economy, um, for, the fu- for the bond market, um, for government funding, um, for the Saab itself, um, that... I, I, I suspect um, in the space of less than a year, um, you know, this, this economy would be in a recession. So it's not an option that's available um, for, 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 this, um, for this economy, for policymakers in any way, shape or form. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that talk about, you know, policy has got to be a little bit more um, experimental and policymaking is experimental in nature. But certain things have got fairly predictable um, consequences. And it would be um, stupid, to say the very least, to try and pursue, uh, you know, public policy measures that we know um, will lead to failure. So I'd like to just pass that one and say, can we not discuss it anymore? Um, we've discussed it for the for the better for the better part of eighteen months. It's not going to work. Um, it's just a fact. So now um, going back to the broader question um, around, what are the um, you know the 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 the, the, the constraints or the, the possibilities around uh, you know funding um, you know government expenditure and social transfers via um, you know the bond market. That's the one I'll I'll look at specifically because that's the one area um, that that I know a fair degree about. Um, so you know one of the things that came up, um, one of the issues that came up in in in, in earlier discussion is that you know. You need to look at um, debt um, instead of looking at the overall debt stock of government. When you're thinking about um, the constraints, you really need to look closer at the debt service cost um, as a percentage of expenditure. And this is um, this is definitely something that I agree with. But one of the, the points that also came up is that you know you're sitting with debt um, service cost to GDP that are definitely above twenty percent um, that are trending more towards the twenty five percent. Uh, so to say that um, your level of debt is no is not yet a problem, um, you know, I think is already wrong. You're already sitting in a in a very precarious position where, uh, you know, your your debt stock um, and your debt service um, levels are already pushing the boundaries of what is sustainable. Um, and in fact, if you look at where markets are at the moment, um, you know. Edgar showed the, um, the, 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 made the point that your debt service costs are currently higher than they've ever been. You're sitting with a very steep yield curve, um, and Treasury has, has tried by all means to try and flatten the curve. It's not working, um, and it's telling you that um, you know your your term premium, which is the risk um, that is priced into your bond curve, is already quite high. I estimate that um, it's in the region of 200 basis points. So essentially. You're, you're already sitting with a distressed market um, and you can either take it to heart and say the market is already distressed or not, but it doesn't change the fact. So in the context of um, our current situation, um, what would happen if you pushed expenditure um, further? Uh, you definitely pushed expenditure beyond the point at which you know, markets believe you can. So there's two ways in which this thing can play out. Um, the worst way, which I think is a low probability um, kind of event, is that you lose market access, or, so, or, or essentially, you know, um, you know, external um, external investors um, sell their bonds in a hurry. Um, you have 
a quick exit out of um, the bond market and out of uh, out of financial markets and out of brand. Um, and you have essentially in that environment um, an inflationary problem, which necessitates that monetary policy be tightened. Um, and you have stagflation, which is bad for everybody. Um, and essentially, poverty will be worsened. So this is now the worst case scenario. I don't think that is likely to happen. Um, what you might have is a continuation and a worsening of the current um, situation. So what is the current situation? You have very high borrowing costs um, and, you you know, they're already endemic uh, and then you make it even worse. So if you think that um, every single interest rate in the economy is priced off um, the government curve, um, at the short end of the curve, you've got the trade, you've, you've got the sub rate, and um, at the back end, you've got the bond curve, and every single funder is subject to the same costs. Um, then a higher cost of borrowing for government means a higher cost of borrowing for everybody. Um, and within that kind of context, um, you know, you, you you have a negative impact on investment, um, you have a negative in, in, impact on long-term growth, etc. Just to give you an example. Um, you know, one of the, 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 the transactions that are currently going through the market or are currently being priced is around the IPPs. Um, and the IPPs are normally funded of the government um, inflation length or real curve. Um, and one of the things that came back was that it's so expensive for um, these transactions to be funded um, at the moment, more expensive than it was um, in previous rounds. Um, and that, you know, they now have to think about ways in which you, you know, you can alleviate that funding. What you can do in that instance is probably pass the, the cost on to the consumer, but it ultimately means that the cost structure for the whole um, economy is higher. It constrains, um, you know, the expansion of, um, of the private sector. Um, and as a consequence, it almost, uh, you know, puts you on track to, um, you know, having lower growth for um, lower growth for longer. So, you know, and, and I think that's, that's a really important channel of transfer. And if you think that in South Africa, um, you know, the way to address poverty in the long term um, is to grow the private sector, is to grow your economy. Um, the private sector remains the bigger contributor to um, employment and should be um, the bigger contributor to employment growth going forward. So if you constrain uh, private sector growth, you are ultimately, um, you know, basically not dealing with poverty in the in, in, in the medium to longer term. So for me, I think, you know, you've got to look elsewhere um, when you think about poverty alleviation. Um, you know, there are, there are, there, there's a lot to be said about improving the social wage. Um, there is a lot to be said about, you know, also not taking away from other, um, from other 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 government programs that are growth enhancing over time, be they education or healthcare, um, you know the point made about you know some of the the resource allocation that you're now using is stuff that should be going to the NHI, which should out which should arguably uh, be more um, enhancing for for growth um, going forward. These are all points that I think are very important and, and need to be brought um, uh, into, into, into the question. So for me, um, you know, I think you already, you already hit the limit as far as um, using, um, you know, the, 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 using the bond market to fund extra government expenditure is concerned.